Well, chat, I have to admit something to you as we come back to more Awesome Games Done Quick 2022 online. I have been doing the math this whole time and I just don't know. I'm trying to figure out which run is faster between Monkey Ball and the next run we have ready for you, but I can't get the translation of uh, like the speed between monkeys in balls and a little magical creature going super duper fast. That said, I, you know, if, if anybody out there is a mathematician, please, if you want to run the numbers for me, if you were watching the last run, I would love to know. We are ready for Ori and the Blind Forest with Rin SR. Let's go fast. So, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Rin. Uh, I'll be running Ori and the Blind Forest. Uh, I've been running this game for a little bit over a year now, I believe. And I'll be accompanied um, by two lovely commentators who will be doing most of the heavy lifting. Hello, Grimalios. Hello, Shafe. How oh, are I'm, both of you doing? I'm Hi. great. You, yeah, I'm doing great too. My name is Shafe. Sorry for talking <laughs> over one of them. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I think that's a good start, talking over each other. Really yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, very, very professional caliber here. So yes, this is Ori and the Blind Forest Definitive Edition. If you've never seen it before, uh, it's a 2D platformer, Metroidvania, predominantly focused on movement rather than combat, particularly in the speedrun. Before we get going here, I want to mention a few things. First, for a long time, uh, the main categories of this game on SRC have been dominated by a runner known as Lucidus. That is, until two weeks ago or so, when Rin dethroned Lucy off a main category. In fact, the one that you're going to be seeing today, Rin is now the world record holder with a 43-13. So big congrats to Rin. Second Thanks. rule set is no out of bounds, no teleport anywhere. No out of bounds is uh, probably fairly self-explanatory, but no teleporter, uh, teleport anywhere to use more common nomenclature that you might be familiar with is effectively saying no wrong warp. Third, Rin is going to be playing on KBM. One of the reasons for this, other than sheer preference, is that it does make a few things easier compared to controller, notably one trick which we will talk about as we get to it. So with that, uh, we're ready to go. Rin, are you ready? Yep, I'm ready. Grimelios, are you ready? I'm so ready. Then we are ready to go in five, four, three, two, one. Let's begin. Good luck. GLHF. And we are going to start off by skipping 10 minutes immediately through the skip <laughs> prologue button uh, that is present right there on the menu at the start. And one of the first things that you're going to be seeing here, as is tradition in Metroidvania, as you go to the left. The second thing is Rin is going to be jumping around a lot. Uh, you're going to see this mostly for the first seven minutes. The reason for that is that the geometry uh, of the world is pretty much as it's drawn. So if you're going up a slope, you will actually move a little bit slower than you would otherwise. And <laughs> We did talk about the category being all cabbages, and this is our first cabbage there. That is an energy cabbage. And uh, now we have to go collect our first ability of the game. These yeah, cabbages aren't forgive, uh, forbidden, are they? Mm -hmm. Not that I'm aware of. Okay, good. We will be uh, collecting 60 cabbages or cells. I like cabbages better. Uh, throughout this run, um, we will not be collecting those linearly. So as we go, the run kind of starts slow and it will get faster and faster with skills and in terms of the pace at which we collect uh, the cabbages. Yep. So this is our first ability. It is Sign, uh, otherwise known as Spirit Flame, and we're going to see a little bit of speed tech here straight away on the scroll wheel. As Ren is moving to the right, he's going to be pacing his shots at a very particular rate. In order to be able to continuously move out to the right while killing these Fronkies and not slowing down in the slightest, there gets a little pop-up, presses escape, and there we go. Another thing that you're going to be seeing Rin doing as we head off to our next ability, Wall Jump, is that he's going to be keeping track very closely of his XP. You can't see it on the screen right now. The UI is off for reasons. Uh, that is that... Oh, oh sure. Okay. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure what to do. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hello everyone, welcome back to AGDQ 2022 online powered by Twitch. We are just uh, fixing a few things up real quick. We'll be right back with you for more Ori. Oh, well, there you go. Right back actually means right now. <laughs> Thanks for waiting. Yeah, teacher. You All right, folks, you've got it. We'll be ready to go again in five, four, three, two, one, go. All right. So, uh, as I was saying, Rin is going to be monitoring uh, his XP account, which you can't see because the UI is off because that skips uh, dialogue boxes that would pop up. In fact, right there, you saw Ori pause just for a second as Rin picked up a health orb, and you're normally supposed to get a little toast notification that says, hey, you picked up a health orb, but uh, the UI is off specifically to skip that. Yeah, you're going to see Rin take an intentional death in a moment. Uh, along with experience, Rin is carefully managing health. So in a moment, Rin is going to open the first keystone door for making a save and dipping in the water. Uh, Rin carefully managed his health to die instantly. What that is, is a trick called a ghost door, which skips a little bit of the opening uh, door animation. Yep, and uh, the XP values are going to start mattering uh, very shortly here. Uh, again, it's, we're kind of spamming Spirit Flame in a, in a very particular pattern to be able to get these kills as we go. You see the UI pop up there very briefly. And Grimalius, one of the things, even though like this is sort of basic movement that we're seeing here right now, is that there's a lot of small optimizations going on, like that little backflip to enter into that cutscene a little bit further. Yeah, it's something you really notice uh, when you look at top runners like Rin as compared to newer runners, is even in these early yeah, splits. Yeah, that was a, an accidental early level up. Not going to be too big a deal. And the intent was to level up here on the way out uh, and destroy some of these brambles. So uh, Rin is going to yeah. take a moment and do it now. Not too big a deal, all things considered. There are much uh, worse fates one can find uh, later yeah, on. Yeah, it's like three seconds. It's not a big deal. Yeah. Sometimes the RNG can just do that. Mm hmm. And, so, anyway, uh, Shafe, what is this? This is a wall jump. It is our uh, second ability of the game, the first movement one that we get. We're going to be popping off to the left here real quick to collect an energy cell that is actually required for a trick that is going to be coming up. Uh, you'll notice uh, if Rin flicks the UI on real quick, he's got two energy down at the bottom, uh, three health, and then that center donut uh, is the experience counter slash amount of ability points that uh, he has. There's a four energy door that we are going to do some shenanigans with, uh, but we are only going to have two energy to do so. So uh, that is kind of a bit of a critical juncture. Uh, some very tricky wall jumps, including off a little ledge there, a little log floating. Uh, in the midst there, and we're going to be heading off to uh, Blackroot, and you're going to be seeing a trick as we uh, enter Blackroot called Save Anywhere, which you are going to be seeing a whole bunch throughout the run. Yeah, Save Anywhere is a very impactful glitch. Uh, this game, you haven't seen it yet, but it has an ability menu, and normally Ori is locked in place while the ability menu is open, but through the Save Anywhere trick, you can walk around with the ability menu open in the background. The reason that matters is that when you spend an ability point, the game saves wherever you're at, even in an unintended location. So we're going to be using that in just a moment. Rin's going to step on the spirit well in just a moment here, open up the Save Anywhere, enter the cutscene trigger, and then save and reload the game. So generally speaking, as this run continues, whenever you see these real quick series uh, of ability menus and ex exits and reloads, it's usually to skip a cutscene. Yep. There are a few instances of other applications, but that is indeed the primary one. So this is Black Group Burrows, one of the areas that was added in the Defender of Edition. Uh, two skills are located here. We're going to get one now. It is the Go Fast ability, uh, known as Dash. Uh, as you can see, uh, the language here is uh, German, and an important note about that, Grim. Yeah, so German is the fastest language in this game, and the reason is that every language is the fastest language. <laughs> uh, because we, we turn off the UI to skip all the dialogue boxes, so it really doesn't matter what language you use. All right, so uh, Rin is on three health here. Those uh, spikes down there deal three hit points worth of damage. He's going to be going for a very specific uh, laser cycle here in a moment, as this orb is going to be spawning and despawning. Uh, little energy things such as those uh, I-beams and platforms and etc. It's got to carry him this uh, through the area with him and this is the laser cycle here kind of passing nice. sort of through the laser <laughs> That's very scary. nicely done but Blackroot is, this section of Blackroot anyway, is predominantly uh, auto scroller. so there's a whole bunch of little tiny movement optimizations like pausing here that Rin is doing in order to manipulate cycles in a very specific way 
Yeah, as with uh, many other parts of the early game, this may look relatively straightforward, right? In terms of skills, we're just sort of running and jumping, but there's a lot going on in terms of micro optimizations. Like even in Black Group, there's something called orb manipulation, which is a little yeah. complicated, but there's just, trust me when I say there's more going on than, than meets the eye. And uh, a little bit of uh, continued auto scroll here as well. Rin is a little bit uh, higher on the XP value than would probably like, but it's okay. Uh, yeah, it should be fine now. Yeah, it should be okay. Uh, the important thing is that we haven't leveled up yet. Yeah, that is, that is the critical thing. Uh, there are some issues with Franky Walk, uh, which will be coming up in a minute or so, uh, where if you are too close to leveling, it can be a little bit tricky to manipulate the Franke in, in the right way, but we're going to see a couple cutscene stacks here in different ways. We talked about using save anywhere to skip cutscenes. You can also use the soul link that you place on the ground. That uh, bright, shiny little pillar of light is the save, aka soul link, and you can also rekindle it if you're near enough to a cutscene. Uh, when you enter it. So you're going to be seeing that as a manipulation nice. sometimes and got the cutscene stack very nice. There's the rainbow dash that you guys put your money in for. Thank you very much for that. Uh, you cannot see the blind movement, but Rin is across the gap, a very dangerous section because of his autosave that is placed there. And now, Frunky Walk. Yeah, the early game of Ori is very dense in terms of commentary, so if you aren't following everything, that's okay. Uh, we'll, we'll try our best. This trick is called Franky Walk. Uh, earlier, Shafe mentioned a four energy door. We only have two energy. So what Rin is going to do is kite this Franky enemy all the way over to the right, very near to the door, and then put two energy in, kill the Franky, and absorb its experience to level up and refill energy, and put two more in the door. It's going to go by very quick, but done correctly, this is a very powerful sequence break that lets us get to Moon Grotto early. Yeah, you're intended uh, to go through the Charge Flame Tree and then along the loop around the Swamp Loop and then down into Grotto. Yeah. And nice. just like that, when Oxygen goes on a date with Magnesium, Wonderful. OMG, we are into Death Gauntlet. Wow. And, uh, Ooh, and heading the 10 out of 10 joke. Man, to take my job. That was great. <laughs> That's probably the best chemistry joke of GDQ so far. Yeah, I had a bit that we talked about before about pop, uh, properly petting Frankies, but that was way better. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're coming up on God Cycle. What is, uh, what is the God Cycle? A uh, God Cycle is a very careful manipulation of your movement, including pausing on that little edge to the right there that you see Gomo going across, then dashing, climbing this wall with a very specific uh, series oh, of jumps movements, trying to get the ramp on the crystal in order to be able to uh, get that cycle fast. Uh, fun note, all cycles in this game are eight seconds, even if they're not. <laughs> and uh, Rin, don't forget to back up your save uh, somewhere here before double jump. Oh, yeah, true. Good call. That damage that Rin just took was intentional. Uh, remember the ghost door from earlier where we skipped part of the animation? You're going to see the same thing, except that rather than dying to water, we die to the Franky. We're quickly coming up on double jump, which is pretty self-explanatory as a skill, but we're going to be doing some more blind movement when we get there. Yeah, we'll give Rin a little bit of uh, quiet here because he does have to hear uh, his dash timings. Here's the backup. Okay, we're through. Nicely done. Nice. On the left side of the wall. <clears throat> and yeah, that's uh, pretty powerful. Yeah, uh, we're talking about the geometry of the map a little bit earlier and how everything looks basically the way that it's drawn. We are actually going to abuse that uh, right now here in Moon Grotto. You're supposed to go all the way across to the left and sort of chase Guma around, but there's a little lip on this wall right here that's just vertical enough in order you'd be able to get a wall jump off of it. And there's the bag yes. jump as well. Yes. Only French <laughs> runners can do it. Excellent job, Rin. Runs valid. <laughs> that saves, I think, 20 frames, right? Yeah, it's 20 frames. <laughs> <laughs> totally uh, worth it. You saw a real quick rekindle cutscene skip. There's supposed to be boulders falling here that uh, uh, try to hit you and damage you. They're not going to be here. As we said, throughout this run, you're going to see a number of real quick cussing skips. Some of them with Save Anywheres, some of them uh, like this one with a rekindle. You'll also see some of these cutscenes play sort of out of order as Rin ascends back up the area. Remember that we sequence broke to get here. Yeah, Rin was just trying to kind of do a little backwards double jump there uh, into the cutscene to be a little bit faster. So we opened up this two energy door earlier, and we did that because we have a green cabbage that we need to collect here, uh, which is certifiably tastier than blue or yellow cabbages. And another... I didn't know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Had to try for it, though. I, I respect the effort. I respect the effort. That jump is possible. It it's is. called the garbage jump for <laughs> no just reason. <laughs> uh, here you're going to see Rin take a quick pit stop to activate this teleporter. We will be using it later. 
uh, before continuing up. Uh, like I said, our objective right now is the first dungeon of the game. Nice job, got through Gandalf. Uh, <laughs> the dungeon is called the Ginso Tree. That's where we're headed to. Yeah, and it has uh, uh, a few different things that we need to get out of there. One of them is a skill. The other is uh, an energy cell to fulfill the requirement of the category. We get another timed level up here in order to kill that frog and that slime, which was just off screen in order to progress onwards towards the Ginza tree itself. And we're going to go up here, skipping the teleporter that you might remember down below there because we do not need that one in this category. And uh, we are going to do another rekindle skip for the first cutscene here. And uh, then we're going to put the water vein in the door as Gumo is conveniently running away with it. And uh, a tea tree, I do believe, since we're going to have just uh, some movement here through the first half of Ginza or so that you've got time for probably four or five donations. Lovely. We've got uh, 40 or 50 or maybe more, but I'll get through four or five. Covert Muffin donates $20 and says, Hey, Rin, incredibly proud of the work you've put in. Best of luck with Wilhelm and the grenade jumps. Ori fam is watching and cheering you on. Thank you, Covert. Thanks, Muffin. <laughs> Blue Pio sends in $5. Let's go, Rin. You got this, you amazing gamer. Much love from the watch party team. The Sound Defense sends in $25. The only fair and objective way to determine the relative speeds of Ori and Monkey Ball is to measure bananas per second. By this measure, <laughs> Monkey Ball is infinitely faster than Ori. I know this. I am a certified mathematologist. Thank you, Sound <laughs> Defense. And one more. $10,000 from FanGamer. Hey, everybody. Wow. FanGamer here. We'd like to invite you to check out our AGDQ 2022 lineup, where 100% of the profits from sales gets turned into donations just like this one that support the Prevent Cancer Foundation. Fangamer has an assortment of awesome GDQ merch you'll love, like the official event badge, the Metal Gear Solid finale game pin, the sleek blindfolded hoodie and joggers, and many more. You can find the full merch lineup at fangamer.com slash GDQ. Thanks to everyone who has already picked something up. We really appreciate it just barely missing the uh, force cycle on that boss there. It is possible with uh, Quick Flame, which Rin leveled up uh, way back over at Black Grouper. It was very tough to do. Uh, it was only about one shot away, but that's okay. And yeah, it's uh, really hard. <laughs> it is really, really hard to get. Uh, and I would also like to dispute that whole banana thing because we do have an area in Ginzo coming up a little bit later uh, that we nicknamed Banana Stand because reasons. <laughs> Stand? Is that a that's JoJo's true. reference? <laughs> I I don't even know. I can't tell you. It's just somebody said it was a banana stand, and now it's canon. So this is Bash. Cromelio, so you want to explain how this works? Yeah, Bash is a very unique ability to Ori. What it lets you do is to latch onto certain objects, like uh, these lanterns, or in a moment you'll see Rindu on an enemy as well in projectiles. You throw yourself in one direction, and the thing you grabbed in the other direction. There is a very powerful glitch uh, called double bashing, which is a little easier on keyboard and mouse. That's something that Shafe alerted, uh, alluded to earlier. Uh, we'll be seeing our first double bash in just... Uh, a moment right here, you'll see uh, Rin shoot the projectile in one direction and then oh, double bash it. it. Drops. Well, uh, I guess we're saving here. Uh, this guy can just respawn, it's no big deal. Yeah, we just yeah. got to go and get the shark to respawn, that's not a big problem. Uh, yeah, th yeah. That, that is the thing about double bashing is that it, it is a one frame window that you have, and despite you know being on KBM and having scroll wheel available, uh, sometimes the double bash <laughs> will just drop. There is a very specific rhythm that you have to do with it. And uh, I did get it there a second try. This is key duplication. It's exactly what it sounds like. Rin's going to put three keystones in the door, take a death with the keys in the door. And now Rin has three keystones in his pocket, even though he died and things happened with the video game. So that's OK. <laughs> Here's the one energy cell uh, that we do need to collect uh, in Ginzo. If you are hoping to get the Ginzo escape and the music that uh, everybody loved, uh, when they played this game casually. I am sad to report uh, that we are not going to do that. We are going to collect the Ginzo teleporter and then immediately go out to Swamp. Yeah, quick hyperspeed there. Nice job. If you are uh, if you make a save mid-dash, you can get those hyperspeeds. Just one quick mini boss to take out before we take that teleporter. Uh, one thing I want to say about this upcoming trick, which is another pretty powerful sequence break, it was actually discovered through the randomizer. For those unaware, Ori has a what I consider to be a fantastic randomizer. And this is one instance of how the randomizer can actually contribute to RTA categories. Yeah, for sure. And uh, while we have a 10 second cutscene here, if you're interested in playing Ori Rando, you can go to orirando.com. You're welcome, Ico. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now that we have Banish, this section is going to be going by a little bit faster. Gandalf can no longer tell us that we shall not pass. And then we are going to do that jump successfully on the first try this time. Will we get the big girl ramp? No, nah, we will not. I didn't get it. <laughs> but that's okay. 
uh, another rekindle skip here, and then uh, we're going to be doing some additional blind movement to pick up a frog that we have named Ringo, which will become apparent when we are on our way out from the stomp tree. But for now, we are going to take said frog for that randomizer discovered trick, use it as a double bash to shift it over into the spikes here, which it's not supposed to be at, so it doesn't take damage. And then a couple double bashes, the shot breaks the floor off this rhino, and then we are off to stomp tree with another hyperspeed. And because this is going to be a very jam-packed uh, section coming up as we head towards Feather, do want to explain very briefly how charge dashing works. Yeah, um, charge dashing is something that we haven't seen yet. We're seeing the regular dash with that rainbow trail. Charge dashing is an upgrade uh, to regular dashing, which is going to be used uh, both for offense, but primarily for a very, very fast uh, movement tech, both horizontally and vertically in a, a sequence known as a rocket jump. Like I said, you're not going to see it yet, but once we get it, things are going to go from reasonably fast to extremely, extremely fast, and so it may be a little hard to follow as it happens. Yeah, and so we wanted to make sure that was brought up uh, ahead of time, and also because we want to make sure that your lovely donations can be read by the ineffable tea tree. Woohoo! Ineffable? I haven't been described that way since this one time in cup. Never mind. <laughs> Der Unterhandler sends in $10 and says, I'll donate 20 more dollars if the announcer or runner can pronounce my name right. Do it, for charity. Uh, how, how's that sound, folks? Did, uh, did I get close? I think that was a success. <laughs> all right. White Paws sends in $15. Proud of you, Rin, for being here in the big stage after all the work you've put into this game. You are incredible and an inspiration to tackle difficult projects and persevere through them. So congrats again in the world record you achieved. Also, shout out Thanks, to the Paws. whole Ori community. Love you all. Thanks, what do you think? One more? Yep, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead with one more. All right, we got $20 from Frozen Flygon, who says, Hi, Rin, from the Celeste community and CF. I'm so excited to see you running Ori on the main stage. Thanks for all the laughs over the past year, and good luck. Thank you, Flygon. Thanks, Jill. So you probably heard in the background there as Ringo was being bounced across that log that uh, he was doing some drumming. Thanks, uh, Ringo. So uh, we got a couple cells that we're going to collect here in the outer swamp loop area because it is fastest to do now. You will have noted, if you're familiar with the map of Ori, that we have been skipping some of them along the way. Uh, part of the reason for that is uh, not because double bashing uh, is a perfectly good trick, uh, but uh, <laughs> as you drop a couple more, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Lag frames happen. Yeah. Um, but there are actually some cells that are hard locked by certain skills, uh, such as Stomp. Uh, Rin is actually going to be opening up uh, the location to one of those cells, even though we aren't going to pick it up right now. But uh, also there are some grenade locked cells. And so just because we are still going to acquire some of our go fast tech, uh, it ends up being faster to do it on cleanup, as is the case uh, in a lot of sort of completionist categories. Yeah, something else that we sort of glossed over, because we did that uh, swamp entry sequence week, uh, where we didn't complete the Ginsu tree, the water in the game is going to remain poisonous for the entire time. Sometimes it may visually look clean, but it's not. Whenever Rin is in water, he's going to be taking damage once per second. That will become a lot more relevant later. Indeed. Uh, probably about two more donations. Two more donations for you. Jmall116 sends in $500 with the comment glide 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 dash and then it says in parentheses Rin will get it I promise Thanks Jmall And $25 from Super Fluffy Koala that says hello from the Ori speedrun community Good luck on your run Rin we are all rooting for you uh, I wish I had time to explain that joke to you, but we, we just don't have time because Rin is going to be entering Valley here now. That was the charge flame tree that we picked up, which is useful for exactly breaking that wall and about nothing else. Then we're going to be leveling up Charge Dash, which we talked about as we're at the stomp tree. You're going to see the first instance, boom, right there as we attack that bird with the Charge Dash, bashing off of it specifically to refund our energy spent by using the Charge Dash, which we can also do the stomp. You're going to see a lot of that throughout the run. Uh, Rin is going to be timing various different stomp cancels and bash cancels, and sometimes just not canceling them at all, uh, depending on how he's decided to route his energy in order to go very fast, stepping up this wall for another rocket jump and a stomp, which the aura, for some reason, breaks that wall. And moving on to fast stompless grip. Yeah, fast stompless, uh, what we're supposed to do here is go stomp rocks, but we're not going to do that. Instead, you're going to see Rin very carefully redirect this projectile, dash out of the way very quickly to unload a rock that's in the way, while also trying to get to an ability cell. This timing is pretty tight, has to get up top, done properly, get the cell, 
God, that was just frames before the hit happened. Yeah. With that, <laughs> we have successfully acquired the cell, and we're in just a moment going to pick up the glide skill or Kuro's feather. Glide, 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 glide. <laughs> Uh, so the run's officially started. Uh, you can start the timer, uh, <laughs> as we are now going to be uh, zooming very fast. Uh, we are going to go down to go up. This will make sense. Uh, rocket jumps have been happening very fast. Uh, blinking, you miss them. This one, you will definitely see as we go zooming all the way up. Valley rocket jumping again in order to stomp down, catch this bird. This is Sarabash. Will take you about three hours to learn. Very difficult. Rin makes oh, it God. look easy. That Stop rocket jump is down. so scary. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. wasn't worried. I wasn't worried. Not well. And now we are in Sorrow for a couple different reasons. There's a few cells here and also a very powerful ability called Charge Jump. Yeah, uh, just to be real clear about it, Sarabash is a sequence break by getting into this area early. First of all, it's very dangerous because Rin's health is still relatively low and all these spikes deal like four or five damage. It's, it's pretty spooky. Uh, additionally, we skipped an entire second dungeon that we will be going back to later for exactly one cell, but for now it's a sequence break. Yeah, we got a little bit of collection here to do, uh, including these keystones here. This is a very aggressive cycle that Rin is going to be going for, weaving very specifically in order to get air cuts from the lasers, dropping down to get through the first okay. one from the top side, stomping down through all three. Very nicely done. Char dashing over this laser like it is nothing, taking this uh, tumbleweed up to bash up through there. And uh, we're... Rin? Rin? Rin, this frog's going to... This frog's gonna die. You're gonna kill the f Rin. What are you doing? What? That's fine. What? First try. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> that was called crazy juggle. Each of those stomp cancels was uh, a between a two and three frame window with very little leeway to not uh, kill the frog. Uh, Rin did it so quickly that her joke barely had time to land. <laughs> <laughs> very nicely done. Uh, this is a sunstone. It is required because we do need to go and finish the game after all. We are collected all the cells, and this sunstone gets us access to the final dungeon of the game, Mount Horror. We are actually going to visit all the dungeons in, in this category. The Ginzo Tree we visited uh, mostly because of the Bash, because it's very powerful, but also because there's an energy cell. Um, we are going to have to dip into Misty and the Forborn Ruins uh, because there are cells there. Exactly one in each location. And otherwise, we, we wouldn't go because it's like a five minute detour to go get those yeah. two cells. <laughs> but hey. It's pretty ridiculous. <laughs> uh, they do give us access to grenade jumps, and you get to see some cool movement in Forlorn as well. Uh, yeah, for sure. So, Yeah, this skill we just picked up uh, is called uh, Charge Jump. That damage was intentional, by the way, which also means that Rin is now going to die if he touches any of the spikes. Uh, we have just a handful of cells to collect on our way out uh, of Sorrow Pass. Uh, before we continue on, some of this movement, I think, starts to get very, very satisfying. Uh, quickly touching oh. the wall. <laughs> I knew it. That's fine. <laughs> well, hey, you get to see it again. Just a bit of movement there. Uh, as I was saying, getting to touch the wall to refresh these charge dashes. This is where the run really starts to shine, and you'll get to see even better examples of uh, the kind of movement that's possible in this game very shortly as we head into Misty Woods. Yeah, generally speaking, runners of this game will say that the movement in Misty is the most satisfying. I think this category, because you have a lot more of the power skills for longer than you do in some other categories, uh, that it opens up uh, you know, preferences in other areas. For me, it's the Glades Revisit that is one of my favorite areas to go into uh, because of some of the wall dashes that you can end up doing there. This is the last cell that we need to collect in Sorrow. Uh, a couple of very carefully timed bash and stomp cancels to come down here and exit, and we are going to stay quiet because Wilhelm exists. <laughs> I, that's, I, I, not, that's always a fun Easter egg. This is the area we were talking about. Uh, Misty Woods, where you get to see these very careful series of charge dashes. Uh, something I want to point out, if you look down at the bottom of the screen, uh, specifically at that blue energy bar, you'll see that as Rin is performing all these charge dashes, that uh, he is continually spending and refunding the energy. That also means that if you mess up, you run out of energy and you are unable to charge dash until you refill it. So this isn't just mindlessly spam to go fast. There's a lot of intentionality to specifically how all of these charge dashes are performed. Yeah, and we're also haven't touched on the fact that we're skipping some of these pickup animations. You're supposed to get one for every cell that you grab, but if you stay off the ground for five seconds playing the floor is lava, as it turns out, uh, you don't get the animation. So uh, in that instance, you saw the bash off the slime there, very specifically designed to skip that pickup animation. Is, oh boy! Oh, that's a pretty big death. That that is a pretty <laughs> big death, and you know what that means? It's a pretty good time 
for some donations, T3. Yep, you got it. That's what I've been told. Thankfully, we have a lot of those. Zemsis sends in $485.23 and says, Hey, Rin, here's $485 for your 485 seconds of having dashed and using it to great effect. Good luck on your run, and remember not to wait around until getting all 23 of Kuro's feathers. <laughs> Thank you, Zem. <laughs> Kicken and Blake send in $100. Hey, everyone. Greetings from France, where it's getting pretty late. Good luck, Rin, on this awesome run of Orin and the Blind Forest. Don't forget to Rin Spin. We love you. <laughs> Party emoji. Love you, guys. Griss99 donates $25 with the comment. GL with collecting all the glowy orbs, Rin. Love Ori community. Time for more? Yeah, let's say one more. Rory Rye donates $250 and says, Always exciting to see Ori at GDQ. I'm really looking forward to the all cells late game movement. Let's go, Rin! Yo. And if I remember right, we're not actually at the, the fastest part of the run yet, are we? Uh, no. <laughs> we're, we're getting there, but not not quite. We have to do uh, some of that section again, obviously. Rin's a little bit low on energy here because uh, just missing some of the refunds. Uh, oh. Not really. A, okay, well, uh, slightly bigger deal. Uh, <laughs> Rin, Rin, can you just please. Please stop hurting my heart. <laughs> Don't worry, no one's ever died in this tea before. It's fine. No, no, and especially <laughs> not on pace or during a marathon. <sighs> All right, yep. Everyone can breathe. We we've made it to safety. When you get a tree, uh, okay. you feel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you doing okay, right? <laughs> this That's okay. Fine. This skill is oh. called climb. Uh, by itself, it's a relatively. Uh, mundane skill, uh, but in combination with some others, we'll be able to do a trick called grenade jumping. Not yet, but a little bit later. Um, with that so, we still have to exit uh, Misty Woods, so that's primarily what we're going through. We also, at the end of this whole area, we're going to get a key to the second dungeon, which we have to go into for a, uh, for a cell. I'm sorry, a cabbage. A cabbage, that's correct. Uh, until we get that key, though, uh, it's just going to be some movement, and I believe we're actually in a new prize block, T tree. is that right? I think this is actually the very last game of... Uh, no, yes, you're right. This is the very first game of a prize block, running all the way till Hitman Codename 47 All Missions and featuring prizes like a baby coup and Ori plush from Fan Gamer and Moon Studios and an Ori statue from the Storyteller Cosplay and Cute Monster Props. Those first two are $10 minimum donations, and the statuette is a $25 minimum donation. If you want to see those for yourselves, go to gamesdonequick.com and look up prizes near the top of your screen. Very let's nice. Do, uh, killer. Let's do one more quick one while Rune is carrying the orb. Yep. Happy to. Aiko sends in $50 and says, Heart, good luck, Rin. Don't forget you have Dash. Ori Rando hype. <laughs> Thanks, Aiko. I won't forget. <laughs> I hear that might have been based on something that happened. <laughs> uh, yes. That's that's a random meme. I wanted to quickly point out these orb bashes. If you uh, pick up the orb and bash on the same frame, you do this, which is fast, and also I think it looks funny. You end up stacking the animations. That's pretty good. Uh, we are going to get a little bit of quiet time here for Rin, though. I'm uh, going to be performing another section of blind movement, and this one uh, is very hard. Yeah. Nice. That's amazing. <laughs> Every time I see it. Every time you don't see it. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, earlier in the run, if you recall, uh, we've been here before, but there's more to this area we haven't explored. Uh, Shake mentioned that there are two skills down here. One of them, Dash, we've already acquired. We're going to make some pit stops for cells. Uh, we are heading towards the skill Light Grenade, which is going to be the final skill of the run. As an interesting side note, getting all skills is not strictly a requirement for the category. You just happen to need all skills anyway. Uh, yeah, technically not climb, but I mean, we go into Misty for the ability cell anyway, so we pick it up because grenade jumps. Uh, yeah, so a little bit more blind moving here with this ability menu up, a very difficult sequence. Uh, we're keeping this all the way, basically, until we get to the grenade tree uh, in order to skip a very long, about 70-second-ish cutscene, one of the longest ones in the game. Uh, trying to hit cycles here in a very particular order. This looks a bit slow. Yeah, I'm gonna stop it and just kind of quite a little bit safe. Good call. And charge jumping up to get a bash off this bird. That is the cutscene skip. 
as we now grab Light Grenade. This is going to open up grenade jumps for us in short order. Basically, horizontal rocket jumps. The way that works is that you hold onto the wall with climb, which is what makes climb useful. And then you throw a grenade and you charge jump one frame after throwing that grenade and you get said grenade jump. Here it is. Oh, that was the same frame. There we go. There it is. Nice. Yeah, each of those is a very manual frame perfect jump. Uh, I guess we didn't really explicitly describe how rocket jumps work earlier. Both rocket jumps and grenade jumps, as Shafe said, work on the same principle, which is that when you charge dash, you go super, super fast, but just for a moment. And through these various means, through rocket jumping and grenade jumping, you can basically trick the game into not, into not slowing you down again. Would you agree that's a reasonable explanation of it? Yeah, effectively, we're canceling the effect, but preserving the momentum. Yeah. If that makes sense. Um, very, I love that grenade throw charge dash combo. <laughs> yeah, that is just that's so pretty slick. cool. Uh, another grenade jump here to get through the lasers. Very nice. And you're supposed to do this with the grenade puzzle, uh, but turns out when you have charge jump, you can just skip it. Uh, these spikes do infinite damage, so Rin does have to be a little bit careful because it doesn't matter how much health he has, uh, he will instantly die. Throwing a couple grenades to open up lower black root burrows. And we have actually very carefully routed the amount of health cells uh, that we are picking up, including one of the ones that you saw way earlier in Hollow Grove, because we're going to be doing a damage boosted swim, as Grim alluded to earlier on. Thanks, Athos, for this quick kill. We. Uh, uh, I'll just save, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We did not go into Ginzo, uh, the escape sequence, and clean the water. So. Uh. The <laughs> loads are a thing. I don't think you went quite deep enough into the room. If this happens at that spot in particular, uh, it's something we'll touch on later. Generally, I think this game is extremely solid on a technical level. Like, we traverse the world in these ridiculous ways, and it's pretty hard to run into loading uh, loading walls like that. So props to Moon Studios for that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, double bashing has never failed in water. Uh, never. We're going to have to take a death here. So we leveled up Ultra Defense. Uh, in addition to routing our health cells, we've also routed the amount of ability cells that we pick up, specifically so that we can get Ultra Defense to be able to do this swim. You're going to see Rin use these fishes and double bash off of them. He's going to exit with only 2 HP. Thankfully, there's a flower here and also a refill that uh, he can take with a save. Going to play it a little bit safe, take an intentional death in order to be yeah. able to get an additional refill off of the Ultra Soul Link. That's not a problem. This is just a little bit of time, but uh, it saves time in the long run because you don't have to go ahead and do the swim four times. It's uh, certainly a tricky part of the run. Yeah. Is this going to work? It's going to be close. Uh, no, this won't work. Nope. We'll take I can one just save again. Yeah. 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 Energy's the fine. Can... Oh, sorry, go ahead. I just said energy's fine here to do it uh, with the level up time that you got. So yeah, for sure. The cycles are a little bit out, but no, that's perfectly fine. So yeah. um, we're coming up on the halfway point of the run in terms of uh, cell collection, actually. Yeah, there's 60 total, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, in just a little bit here, like probably less than a minute, you're going to see okay. if you can get an ability cell. Nice job getting out of there. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> Uh, this ability cell is cell number 30 out of 60. So remember when I said that uh, this run gets faster, this is what I was talking about. Ori starts moving faster and we start collecting all of these stray cells very, very quickly. Yeah, I think uh, about one third-ish of the cells are collected in 10 minutes in a 45 minute run. So uh, <laughs> it goes by pretty quick. We do have a couple longer detours left to do uh, as Ren is gonna grenade jump over top of a cutscene figure here. Nice. At a very precise angle, very nicely done. Uh, refill the valley teleporter. I yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. save at the valley. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. yeah, you got the valley log swim and so on and so forth. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's something I was going to mention about this category. Um, in all cells, as compared to most other Ori categories, you end up collecting just so much health and energy by the end. Uh, it doesn't mean that it's easy. It doesn't mean that you're safe, especially because there are many things in, in this game world that can insta-kill you. Uh, but for the most part, you end up uh, being able to sort of move around, usually without fear of dying to random enemies as much, especially because every time you get a health cell, your health is fully refilled. It's kind of one nice aspect of this run. Oh, very slick uh, animation cancel with that nice. moment. Very nicely done. Very hard to do. Yeah. Uh, we got another swim here. Uh, coming up, we're going to get an energy refill at the end of it, and uh, then we have to traverse our way down to the Forlorn Ruins. Again, uh, there's exactly one cell there that we have to collect. Uh, ends up being like roughly a five minute detour or something. <laughs> to go for that one cell, it's kind of crazy. But then we start picking up all the cabbages uh, in fairly rapid order after that. 
It's kind of funny, I think it's uh, every single dungeon in this game, there are three of them, end up having one cell each. Yeah. Kind of funny how yeah. that works. Again, refilling health intentionally. Uh, a, a while ago we didn't mention it, but Rin leveled up an ability such that every time a soul link is created, two health is restored, which helps to get enough health to survive these. Just barely making it out alive. Nice job. And uh, this is what we're talking about with the zoomies. If you go, f yep, right there, the camera paused. That's because Rin was going so fast, the game hadn't loaded the next area yet. It is crazy nice. that we have to break this game that hard <laughs> for the game to be like, oh, hold on a second, I gotta do something. <laughs> so uh, just wanna kind of uh, elaborate there on what Grim was talking about earlier uh, with the quality that Moon put into this video game. Uh, also, uh, there are some frozen Goomon out here. Uh, feel free to count them. <laughs> There's one here, uh, just about when we enter Forlorn. Right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And there's a ninth right here, actually, that I never noticed before. Because <laughs> <laughs> the camera has to pan a certain way. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah, that, this cutscene, you need to skip it. Otherwise, it runs invalid. That's just the way it works. There you go. Okay. So as mentioned, this is supposed to be the second dungeon of the game. You're supposed to come here and restore the element of winds before you ever even go to Zorro Pass. The reason we come here later um, in fact, we skip it in most categories, is because with Charge Dash and with Charge Jump, you can just skip all of the gravity mechanics and just fly through this area very, very quickly. I don't think I've seen you do the Charge Jump on the outside <laughs> of that firebox before. Uh, uh, that's so, the optimal cycle. Nice. Uh, <laughs> so we're Charge Dashing, actually, uh, while holding on to the wall there, because that activates the cutscene trigger on the other side of the door. We are opening the door anyway, because we will need to exit. If you don't open that door, it is a soft lock, and you cannot put keystones in the door from the reverse side, unlike in uh, the randomizer, which uh, I will shamelessly plug once again. This is probably <laughs> the only downtime of the run that you get, by the way. <laughs> then, then, yeah. then we're going. Downtime? Yeah, I can work with that. Yes. <laughs> Alrighty. I'll go till you tell me to stop. Sapphire sends in $50 and says, Hey everyone, the Ori games are one of my most beloved games I've ever played, and seeing them shown at GDQ makes me kind of want to learn to speedrun them as well. My mother survived cancer 10 years ago, so thank you so much for everything you do to fight and prevent cancer. Thank you, Sapphire. Sarah Baron, or Kara Baron, sends in $30 and says, Hey Rin, this is your 30 minute alarm. I sure hope you found Dash a long time ago. Keep enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> Turtle Run 2412 donates $15 and says, Shout outs to the Ori community for being some of the best people I've ever met. Good luck on your run, Rin. May the frogs Thanks. of Nebel be nice to you today. T3, and I am. I just wanted to interject. The movement here is very precise. All of these lasers are insta kill. Rin has very carefully routed out how to dash when all the lasers are blocked. It's very risky. Yeah. I wasn't That's sure that right was going to work. Just like yeah. you said. <laughs> uh, uh, you can. It's but great. I'm on it. $1,000 from Zahariel, who says, I did get 100% cells in this game back when, but I'm pretty confident it took me longer than 44 minutes. Good luck to all the runners and prevent that cancer. Musai sends in $50 and says, donating for a spooky spook crab and Arctic kit from the GDQ Discord. Also to my daughter, Alicia, who is absolutely enthralled by the run. Shoutouts to Petrus and Helix for their amazing race. All right. That was a fun one. So we're about to enter the cleanup phase, and this is where we're collecting those final stray cabbages uh, in very short order. We are coming up kind of close-ish to the end of the run, probably about 10-ish uh, minutes or so. Uh, left uh, yeah, go. like eight, yeah. I want to say. Yeah. So in that time frame, you can feel free to count the cabbages. Uh, there is one. <laughs> we're going to be going down into Lower Grotto here, collecting a second one. And then we're going to be stomping down, and we're going to be canceling our charge dashes to go over to this side, where you were supposed to go uh, about 30 minutes ago. And collect the third. Then yeah. we're going to go try beat this crusher cycle. <laughs> Well, it's something that I think is very difficult from a routing perspective on this game is you just have so much energy, but you generally end up using it for more speed rather than more safety. Like, you still can make safety saves, but it's, uh, it's difficult. There's still a fair bit of risk. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's this interesting dichotomy between things are safer, but you can also play more aggressively, so it's actually more dangerous, in a way. So, 
it, it makes for a really interesting run. Uh, just because you have a lot of different uh, options available to you in terms of how you want to play stylistically. Did yeah, we have a really fun, uh, <laughs> we are going to say the same thing. Yeah. That grenade <laughs> jump is one of my favorites. Uh, you go neutral on your input, is that right? You end up uh, kind yeah. of bouncing off the wall and just going up very, very quickly. Yeah, you just kind of wall run very fast. Yeah, you can see how optimized so much of this movement is, just trying to charge dash as much as possible. Uh, also keep in mind that every single charge dash will auto-target an enemy that's near you, so you can't even just charge dash wherever you want. You always have to be aware of which enemies are nearby. I think that was cell number eight in this peanut phase, and there the camera pauses again because we're going way too fast off the grenade jump. And uh, we're back in the glades now, the very start of the game. And uh, Rainbow dashing to our heart's content. Another poison swim here. This one is not even slightly dangerous. We have uh, almost all the health that we're going to be grabbing uh, throughout the course of the game. Uh, just uh, some energy and ability cells left predominantly. Uh, there's one health cell up above to the right, but we're going to go up to Grenadzer here first, and then charge dash right through these enemies. Stop canceling to our heart's content. Uh, seeing the rare dialogue box, uh, because <laughs> Rin left his UI on, or you shy. Yeah, I do want to point out, uh, there's a, a cell coming up here that we call the, uh, Glazer. This laser is insta-kill, rather than pushing the rock as intended. Rin is going to make the save and then charge dash past it and use, nice job, use, uh, triple jump to get all the way across quite a bit faster than pushing the, uh, boulder. Yeah, not, not, not this movement. Not a sweaty palms moment at all. This is why I think <laughs> the glades clean up. <laughs> I just grenade jumped through that front key, all right, then. <laughs> uh, that has stuff. happened before, though. <laughs> I was just about to ask. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Teacher, feel, uh, feel free to hop in uh, with another few donations if you like. Uh, what you're seeing here is generally nothing new. It's just applications of more and more of the same tech. Alrighty, it's a great time for donations because we have a special donation from uh, our very own Vulagin. Fifty dollars. Oh. says, great job on the run, Marin, and thanks for adding to the legacy of fantastic Ori marathon runs. Here's fifty dollars because Dash is skill ID fifty in the randomizer. <laughs> Should we explain that? No. <laughs> it's better if we don't. Yeah. There you go. I think you have to uh, get into Ori randomizer if you want to know more, chat. <laughs> It's funnier without context. <laughs> That's fair. Um, this cell is one that we opened up earlier by stopping a peg. It just ended up being not only faster to get it now, but earlier we would probably not have been able to survive this poison slam, or it would have been very tight if possible. Uh, we wouldn't at all. We wouldn't have ultra defense. Yeah, that's what so, I like, It would be impossible. Uh, yeah, I think it's a six HP swim, and I think we we're coming through here with five at the time. Uh, nope. So we're almost on the cell cleanup phase, actually. Uh, we have a couple more in Horu Fields to get, an ability cell and uh, another energy cell. And then we just have uh, one left in Horu and we're done. Uh, oh yes, this health cell too. Uh, yeah, nobody, has, be, nobody has ever missed that more. pickup in randomizing. Never ever. Should be three more cells remaining. There's two more in this area that we call Horu Fields. We call it that because the final dungeon is Mount Horu. And these are the, you know, fields on the way to Mount Horu. And also it's called that in the video game. <laughs> anyway, there, there's one cell. Uh, nice grenade jump off to the side. Gonna stop. Oh my goodness. Mm, panic. Okay, we're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Never know. <laughs> there are a lot of competing forces on that boulder. <laughs> I'm not getting any health refill until the end of the game, so might as well play it safe. Yeah. I mean, if you wanted to, you could uh, do some shenanigans, but. Oh. Okay, well. Oh, gosh. Um, Sure, pick up animation on lava while not taking damage afterwards. That is uh, a, a magical thing. To I love that Terra Jump grenade jump. It's so good. It's so good. Shout out to Muffin. Yeah, so this area is the final dungeon of the game, Mount Horror. What's interesting is there's a trick you can do to immediately warp to the end of it and begin the final escape sequence. Rin is going to do that, but not immediately. First, we have to go up to the top because the one cell in this dungeon is way the heck up at the top. And it also features my favorite rocket jump of the whole run right here. Yeah, that slime actually only moves when it's on screen and it's on screen during the cutscene, and it moves right where we need to in order to be able to get a rocket jump. It's just one of those sort of... Um, 
serendipitous things that happens. So we're going to do a trick called menu storage here, which is just magic that happens. Don't worry about it. So we're going to reload the game in a very specific way that skips this cutscene. Uh, also has a fun side effect of despawning the hitbox of one of these falling spike crushers. Uh, that one specifically. And then we are going to uh, activate this cutscene after collecting the energy cell, and then we are going to warp so that we can warp so that Actually. we can warp. By the way, this is the last cell. That's 60 out of 60. Cabbage. Yep. Yes, cabbage. <laughs> anyway, so what's happening here, uh, Rin has opened up a save anywhere, has to wait for a particular point in the cutscene where the camera is going to snap back to the main room of, uh, of horror. You'll see that in just a moment. When that happens, spend the point, exit, and reload, and Ori ends up respawning uh, back in the main room right at the entrance, which is... Wow! Wow! Okay! <laughs> <laughs> That was called door warp. It's a frame perfect trick to warp to the bottom. It happened so fast we barely even got to see it. Amazing. Uh, and and then we're gonna warp again uh, on on this door after activating this cutscene. And the reason we do that is so that we activate more storage shenanigans so that the cutscene is playing so that we can move while it's blind. And and just okay, just things happening off screen. Don't worry about it. I think I'm, I'm sure you all did this. Ooh. It's fine. Yep. Uh, there's still some safety stress we can do here. Yep. Uh, and just wait out the cutscene. Yep. Not a problem. And then just kind of dash underneath that rock by crouching. Uh, magical things. I love this game so much. All right. So we're going to charge up, up to the lantern and do a series of bash cancels in order to preserve our energy. Health is somewhat of a concern, but not really a decade. It's a bit more of a concern. After taking that damage, uh, we have an effective seven. total 7 HP, so we're good because of Ultra Defense. And we are going to bash off a couple of fish, say hi Jeremy, bye Jeremy, and up we go to bypass a chase sequence trigger for Curl, hugging the left wall, making sure to bash in a specific direction, while grenade jumping to skip a cutscene that is uh, a, a minute 20, <laughs> but it's split up into two segments of 40 seconds apiece. There we go. And there we well go. Done. Time is not now. Rin still technically has to hold a button for 40 more seconds to move to the right, but GG. Yeah, if anyone is inclined to say GG, I thought it was a good run personally. If any of you agree, you can probably safely put your GGs now. You can see the cutscenes a little bit uh, messed up due to that final grenade jump. Yeah, yeah I, think, I, think Chad's, weird. <laughs> I think Chad's gonna end up being about 50% GG and 50% spins. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> kind of in the vibe the whole time and I am into it. You know, I, I will count spins as GGs. Oh, very important uh, micro optimization here called narrow hopping. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> My best mashing for you guys. Didn't soft lock time. this time. We, we didn't say right. time. That was time. Oh, yeah. Sorry yeah. about that. Sorry. Yeah, that was time. <laughs> time was when you crossed the tree. <laughs> uh, that oh, was well an excellent done, yeah, it was really good. Yeah, just waiting for the timer to spin over on my screen so I can tell you your time if you'd like it. Uh, yeah. yeah, sure. Go ahead. That Looks is... like it is 48 42. Very nicely that is done. Way better than I expected. Especially with like, some big deaths. Like, this game can be pretty punishing, but uh, yeah. If yeah. you like, fake some safety saves, it's mostly fine, but I was a bit worried after the death in Misty Woods. Yeah, that, yeah. Was, that was a pretty On the other hand, you did go buck wild on those frogs. True. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> True. Uh, but yeah, that is Ori and the Blind Forest Definitive Edition. All cells, no out of bounds, no teleport anywhere, as performed by world record holder Rin SR. Rin, do you have anybody that you want to shout out? Uh, yeah, so I'd like to shout out, um, obviously, all of the Games on Quick crew. You guys are doing an amazing job at, like, sending us up. Just organizing all the logistics and stuff, like even everyone that works like behind the scenes, like thank you guys for organizing this amazing event. Uh, shout out to Gareth Coker for making the music of this game. All second. Very that. good soundtrack. And shout out to the to the Ori community. Uh, you guys are amazing. <laughs> Thanks for all the dash donations. <laughs> uh, Grim, do you have anybody? Uh, no, I was just going to second. Uh, if you thought this run looked interesting, the speedrun page is speedrun.com slash Ori underscore DE. I'm sure there's a Discord link in there. Uh, I like to think we're a welcoming place. Come say hi. 
Yep, I, I'd agree with that. Probably one of the most welcoming speedrun communities I've been a part of, and I've been a part of a few now. Uh, and I also want to uh, thank my uh, close and personal friend, Mistress Nine, for uh, having my back throughout uh, all these years since uh, uh, right before entering high school. It's been a long time now, uh, coming up 22 years or so. Um, thank you very much. Appreciate you. And with that, uh, we'll kick it off to Tea Tree. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for that amazing run of Ori in the Blind Forest. So technically dense, so exciting to watch, to listen to. I loved every part of it. Thanks again.